What's good y'all, it's Taja, and I am coming to you tonight with a wine chat, which is a fake wine chat because it's really just ginger ale. Well, actually ginger beer, but um, I felt like I wanted to come and just have a very good, authentic conversation with y'all in just right now what I just kind of learned and studied uh, tonight when I was reading, rereading Acts chapter 8. So, I just had this really like, I want to say, I don't know, good revelation that I took from this story in Acts chapter 8. So earlier, one thing I've been doing um, or started recently, my job, look at me, look at this baby hair sticking up. I can't wait to take these braids down, but I'm trying to make them stretch. I'll put a little gel in that and slick it back. But, um, <laughs> y'all are getting me fresh out the bath in a nice, comfortable nighty. I'm waiting on my prescription medicine to come to the door. They delivered it early. It was supposed to be delivered tomorrow, but they're delivering it tonight. So, I'm up even though I want to be in bed. So I figured, let me do a little journaling. Let me do a little bit of writing. And then I had this revelation that I was like, I need to share this with you all. So in Acts chapter eight, what I've been doing recently, let me get back. My brain is all over the place for a Monday. What I started to do, and this by started, I mean, this is my second time doing it, <laughs> was that I felt like in my study time and my devotion time, my Bible reading time, I was having trouble feeling like my memory was serving me well. So I've been in this like thought process recently of like, man, I want to be able to really give an account for all kind of different things that I believe and understand and all of that if ever in the situation to have to do so and sometimes I realize like I know certain things are pieces to verses and in one season I felt like just by reading it I was just soaking it in I could just remember oh that was in uh Philippians that was in this book that was in uh first kings you know all this kind of stuff. And at this time, I'm just like, I don't feel like my brain is remembering as much as I would want it to. And so I said, I need to do, I need to elicit another behavior in order to maybe help my Bible reading and my Bible study time. And so what I said I wanted to do was take a chapter or a section of a chapter, whatever I'm reading for that day, or a couple of days. And I kind of want to walk through it and take notes of what's happening in each of the chapters. And so I started with the story. I think I'm eventually going to go back to chapters one through six. But I started with Stephen's story in chapters six through eight of Acts, which Stephen is a beautiful story one of the early church leaders as well and he leads us into our story and transition into Saul slash Paul and so I wrote down I went through six through eight walking through his story and taking some notes on that so then I was in chapter eight today and I was just like hmm I read it this morning before work and I was just really like okay so it kind of talks a little bit about Saul. Then it talks about how the church was persecuted after Stephen was killed. And so they got scattered throughout Judea and Samaria, like the Holy Spirit had said they would be. And then it starts to get into this story of Philip. And Philip is like one of the main characters in chapter eight. Philip 
does a couple different things, but the story I want to focus on that they talk about in chapter eight was his interaction with the Ethiopian eunuch, the high official in Queen Candace, Candace's court officials, whatever. So a lot of us know that there was this encounter with this Ethiopian eunuch that helped start the revolutionary like fire of Christianity and not fire in a bad way, but like light it up, <laughs> light it up type of fire in Ethiopia from this man's, I guess, conversion or belief in Christ, right? So I was reading earlier, and then as I was reading it again and taking notes this evening, so right before I hopped on this, I got to a verse that said, this is it, chapter eight, verse 26, it said, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, and then, in the like parentheses it says this is the desert road and i was like okay so in my bible i have the tony evans study bible so in the footnotes it has some of his commentary on some of the verses and then I also have his commentary, but I wasn't using his commentary tonight that has just like his full commentary on the whole Bible. I just was reading the, the footnotes. And I got there and I was just like, I wonder why, in my head, this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, why did it specify this is the desert road? Like that's such a random detail to put in there. And it said the desert road, not a desert road. I don't know. I might have to do some more research on that. But I went to the footnotes to see what he had said on the verse. And he didn't, in the in the study Bible, it doesn't have verse 26. And I was like, okay, so make note of it. Write it down. Write your question down. Be like, why? Like random detail, the desert. Why is he mentioning that? Okay. And I keep reading and then I start writing down some more thoughts. So I, like I said, I'm just writing notes on the chapter because I'm hoping that as I write notes, as a person who in school, this would be a tool for me. I'd be like, man, I wrote it down when I'm taking tests. I'd be like, I see, I see it in my head kind of because I wrote it down. And so I'm like, I know I wrote it in green. That's why I also people always laugh at me because I journal in colors and in pens and I be writing and I got all kind of different colors up in here. But it just helps me to like think and remember things. So I always have different colors that I, I write with and I always have multiple colors when I'm taking notes especially. So I'm writing, just writing the notes down of what I'm reading. So I'm talking about, you know, he meets him and that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading aloud from the prophet Isaiah. And when he was doing that, the Holy Spirit told Philip to get up and go to that chariot. So when he goes there, he's hearing this man reading out loud and he's just like, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy's like, how can I understand if nobody, if someone like you doesn't help me understand this? So that goes back to understanding and having, this is why, I'm trying to have an account for everything that I believe and that I can stand ready to give an account. And sometimes it's like, whew, what I have known, what, you know, how to talk about whatever that, that eunuch was reading aloud from. So what Philip had did, he started there with the section of text that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading about and he weaved that into the story to get to Jesus and the gospel and things like that. And so I'm like, man, what a life lesson. You know, sometimes when 
we have people or individuals that we come across and if there's something that we want to share with them and we're like oh this is such a bigger conversation this is why you need to be one led by the holy spirit to know i feel like in those situations he gives you the grace to like one remember things that you've studied that's why it's important to put things in your brain I always pray please help me remember bring it to my remembrance I always I get that now as an older person but when I was younger I'd be like why do people be saying that why do old people be praying that but I understand it now as an adult and so I'm always like bring it to my remembrance but then also give me the grace to meet people where they are so you may want to present the gospel like okay he's reading from the prophet Isaiah uh, let me go to Matthew let me go to to John and let me start there or let me start in Genesis when it's like yo 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 meet people where they are and you can always the road always leads back to Jesus no where you no no matter where you start and so in, in all all of the scriptures point to Jesus all of it Old Testament New Testament um minor prophets major prophets all of that points to jesus and so not having to be afraid to tackle things from where people are is one of the lessons i took but then i kept writing and i get to this point at the end of every chapter i write a a note section for myself of what i'm thinking i'm gleaning from the story and as i was writing I just felt like the Holy Spirit maybe highlighted this in my brain for my own interpretation. But what I thought about the desert road, because I started putting it down. Oh, excuse me. I started putting it down. I was just like, I wrote this. I said, you may not be called to such a nice environment, but we still need to obey while we're there. So Philip was called to a desert road. He knew the road that the Holy Spirit, the angel of the Lord told him to go to. And he was like, all right, I'm going to go. And he obeyed while he was there. So when the Spirit told him to get in that chariot, even while he was in this environment that may have not been so nice, it's hot. Ain't, ain't nothing great about the desert. You know, now in society, you're like, oh, the desert is so beautiful. But no, it's not. I'm in this Texas heat and <laughs> these hundred plus degrees, it ain't nothing kind of, no, no kind of cute. So he obeyed while he was there. And then I started to think about this and I was like, because in the chapter, let me get back to it. It says in chapter eight, verse 36, so this is after Philip had talked to the eunuch. He's explaining this. And it's the verse, let me read 35 actually. It says, Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture, right? So that's why I said start with that. And then it said in 36, as they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? So he ordered the chariot to stop and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. So I'm sitting here thinking and I'm like, okay, you're in a desert, not a nice environment. But then what really stuck out to me, I said, hmm, when you're in the desert, you don't know, sorry y'all, let me just swipe. Let me swipe that up so that I'm on my phone and my grandma was calling. I'm gonna call it right back. I'm gonna wrap this up so I can call my grandma back. But when you're in the desert, you don't know when you're gonna come across some water, right? And I said, what an, an environment to be in, to be like, okay, Philip has this assignment. He doesn't know how long he's gonna be there. But it was enough time, this is what I felt like I was illuminated about, why we needed to know it was a desert. There was enough time that this man was traveling with Philip and they're talking and it's enough time to get through. He probably had some questions, some, you know, 
as Philip's explaining these things to him, he's probably, you know, having dialogue and being able to really get some questions answered because he's like, I'm reading these scriptures and if unless someone like you can help me, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. And so how much time, we don't know how much time was before they started that conversation to when they found water. And to be able to say like, man, we had that, you know how sometimes you're just out and you may be at a happy hour or some lounge or somewhere and you run into somebody and you have a conversation that's just like, we could be here forever. And when you really allow the Holy Spirit to lead and you're not rushed to go and to leave and be distracted, but you know that you're doing something for the Lord, how those conversations can then prime, be ready for, you know, whatever else the situation may happen. And I know sometimes we're so on the go and we have this and that to do, but what if we just understood that he has us in situations sometimes where it's like, dang, I'm stuck at this location because the building is shut down and we can't go nowhere. So maybe this is a time for me to have this long enough conversation with somebody who may be questioning some things. And it was like, to me, it just felt like maybe at the point of when he finally had enough information, when it was ready to be done, God was like, okay, here's the water, let's get him baptized. And then after that, Philip was carried away. The Holy Spirit took him away to another place. And I was just like, maybe that detail, like I never thought about the fact that it would take some time to get to some water probably. And that amount of time between when he started to when he got to that water, that conversation was probably so fruitful that this man was like, wow. And then it went to Ethiopia and just spread and all that good stuff. And so, I don't know, it just helped me answer my own question about the desert. And I may be wrong. There may be some other interpretation about it, I don't know. But that's what I felt like the Holy Spirit highlighted to me about that desert phrase. Cause it just felt so random to me. I was like, why did, why did they need to let us know that it was in a desert? I don't, I don't get that. But. I just wanted to share that with y'all. That's my wine chat for tonight. Thank you for joining me. And um, I look forward to doing another wine chat with you in the near future. Until then, bye y'all.